minutes. Let me know. All right, we're good to go. So welcome. Yep, keep coming. My name is uh, Dimitris Andreadis. I run the Quarkus team at Red Hat. I'm engineering director. And today I want to talk to you about our journey with Quarkus and AI, how we integrated uh, Langchain for J in the project, and hope to give you an idea how easy for you to get started and starting, you know, injecting some intelligence in your applications. Uh, who has uh, used Quarkus before? Okay, uh, maybe a third. And uh, who has some experience with LLMs and this stuff? So, almost nobody. Cool! You came to the right place. All right, so let me tell you this story. Do you know, do you know this movie? Cool, okay. This movie was the reason I'm here today. Because uh, back in 83, uh, whatever, it's the story of this teenager that through a modem connects to the army Pentagon computer thinking he's playing a game and it's about to start a nuclear war <laughs> and the author of the you know software somehow asks the computer and says no play with itself and then when it plays with itself figures out that there's no way to win a nuclear war and it uh, aborts the launching of the missiles and the world is safe but anyway for me that was super exciting that computers could have intelligence i started with com 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 computers i st studied i worked and and a long time later, I realized that computers were very dumb, you know, for them. And I, I was talking to a fellow here, he studied AI, he told me he had to remove it from his CV because people were joking about this. Uh, yeah, so nothing very exciting happened for a long time. And when we thought about AI, you know, it was things like, uh, you know, the Turing test and uh, Elisa, the chatbot that picked up words in the doc and use them to have a conversation with you, but it wasn't really smart. Uh, expert systems written in COBOL, LIPS, if you remember about those. But there were breakthroughs like, uh, you know, Deep Blue beating Kasparov, like a very strong computer with an ar army of engineers behind it. That was a big thing. But for the most part, when we thought about AI, it was science fiction. And, uh, but then the last decade, things actually started getting, in, you know, more interesting. So things are happening. I've you've noticed, I don't know, IBM Watson winning Jeopardy. Uh, you're probably seeing the, the, the robots from Boston Dynamics do fancy things and running and jumping. It's really impressive. Uh, in, in, in US, there are taxis now that have license to drive on their own and pick up people in a couple of states. Uh, for me, the most impressive thing was actually these uh, efforts by Google with AlphaGo beating the best Go player in the world. That was in 2016. Even more interesting, a year after, a version of AlphaGo, the Alpha Zero Go, starting from zero knowledge, just trained on its own, and within three days, it beat AlphaGo, who beat the best player in the world. And they repeated the experiment with chess, and the Al Alpha Zero chess version in four hours learned better chess than the best chess software of the time. So something changed. And I've, I've, I'm sure you yourselves noticed that something changed. Like last year, this picture won a competition, an art competition. This picture was generated with prompting and a bit of uh, post-processing. And now they're debating whether you can copyright this. Who made the picture? Is it the prompter? Is this the computer? Nobody, you know? because it's based on, you know, public domain data. Uh, so this is generative AI, which is a revolution in the sense of, you know, the computer just doesn't just understand the world, but creates new stuff. And we thought this is, you know, human type of behavior. And of course, things got crazy with ChatGPT. We're only 14 months after ChatGPT was released. In five days, they had a million users. So it broke every record about uh, you know an internet service. So something has changed. Now these uh, abilities are available to the public. So the gene is certainly out of the bo bottle. So we're living in a new era. Uh, so this is a very text intensive slide, but I wanted to give you like a very quick overview 
about large language models. So basically, the idea is you you make you take a very big uh, um, uh, network, uh, not network. Uh, yeah, uh, with billions of parameters, neural network, billions of parameters, and tons of data. So th these two factors are important. So the bigger the neural network and the more the data you feed it, the better it becomes. The problem is to train this neural network, you need massive hardware, you know, millions of data, so not everyone can do this. So like big organizations or you know, f you know, or universities working together would probably do that. But the idea there, there is that the m main model, all it does, is it can predict the next next word. So if you say once upon a, it will tell you time, with a high probability. If you give a sentence, it can continue and produce a book. So that's all it does, right? So that's the the base model, and then you have the the fine tuning to take this base model and make something useful. So if you want this to have like such like behavior, like questions and answers, able to hold the conversation, you have to feed it ton, you know, many hundreds of curated documents, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. And then through extra training, it learns to mimic this behavior uh, using the knowledge that already has acquired in the previous phase. And in doing so, also, you may want to make it more helpful, honest, harmless. So, for example, when you ask, uh, you know, can you tell me how to make a bomb? It will tell you, oh, maybe <laughs> I'm not allowed to do that, or I'm not allowed to do racial comments, or whatnot. So, this extra training. But wha why I'm telling you all this stuff? This is data science stuff, right? Is, is there any data scientist in here? I thought so. You're just developers, so you know, what do I care about this stuff, right? Uh, well, the thing is, uh, no matter how complicated this whole thing is, it's just an API. It's an API like every other API that you can access from somewhere. The difference being this API is non-deterministic. So every time you call it, it might give you back something different. So you have to deal with this complexity. There's one added complexity that this API is completely stateless. Every time you call it, it's a new conversation. It doesn't remember anything. So if you want to have like a discussion, you need some kind of middleware that will get the question, the answer, and every time send back the whole conversation and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you go to ChatGPT, there's something in between that plays this role, right? Um, and the other interesting thing is, that, you know, people say, oh, I'm going to do retraining, blah, blah, blah. But you don't have to really re retrain a model. A generic model is really good. You just need to provide it with a bit of extra data, and you can do your amazing things. So really, only a few people will get to actually, you know, retrain a model and needing special infrastructure for that. So. Many people tried, okay, oh, it's just an API, let's call this API. So <laughs> a fellow from Red Hat wrote this article, uh, let's uh, talk, talk to ChatGPT. Oh, you can find it online, I'll show, show you the links and everything. But it didn't quite work. Like You can do a, a hello world with that, it's very complicated. And of course, you know, n it cannot handle this state retention and dealing with prompts and you know all of this stuff. It's, it's complicated, so it's not really useful, right? And things continued like this until in October I went to DevOps and there was this lady here presenting uh, Langchain for J. I, I knew Langchain was a thing in Python and I was trying to s find equivalent in Java and, and someone actually did it. They created Langchain for J. Uh, so what is it? It is, it is a clean room implementation of the Langchain concepts. So this specialized middleware to help you do LLM stuff in Java. Okay? Uh, you can think of it like the hibernate of LLMs. So it has like a uniform API to talk to different things. I can talk to OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, Olama, you know, different models. I can do all the intricacies, you know, handle memory prompts and stuff like that. So, you know, all the, the heavy lifting, more or less. 
And I won't get into details now because there's a talk about this like after this talk in, in B1. So you can go there and learn more. Um, but for me, it was a revelation. And I immediately I thought that that's how you that was the missing link for us that we were looking into this domain. And after the conference, we found the team. We talked, we did a prototype, and, and, and very soon, like, like just six weeks after, we had Langchain 4J integrated with Quarkus, which is what you're going to see now. Uh, and it's great. It's fantastic. We keep working on this. We're very close with the Langchain 4J team. Um, and, okay, you might say, okay, Langchain is great, but why, why Quarkus? You know, why? Why the combination is great? So I have a few key points here. First of all, in Quarkus, we apply the the Quarkus model. So it's just another CDI bin, like everything else you do. So it integrates nicely with all the other things, uh, with annotations. In Quarkus, we have the, the dev mode, which is this iterative thing where, you know, Quarkus runs in the background. And when you do a LLM stuff, there's a lot of, you know, I'll, I'll turn the, the prompt a bit and see how it works again and again and again. So it fits very nicely the workflow, the developer workflow. And in the dev UI, this tool we have, you can see like details about, you know, what uh, the configuration, the model. You can send prompts. You can generate pictures right, right, right there, there in the in the UI. And in Quarkus, we replace some libraries with qu like uh, Quarkus libraries like uh, REST and JSON parsing, which are very, very optimized. So it incorporates fully with our stack. So it's fast, smaller footprint. Whatever you do, you can compile to native uh, with a flag, and then and then you just if you want to deploy, I don't know, a smart application on the edge, you know, it's you can do it without effort, and it also integrates with all the other things we have in Quarkus. So we have you know metrics, tracing, auditing, all this you get for free, like the enterprise features, features like. Uh, you want to have a fallback if the LLM doesn't, doesn't respond, or you want to try two times or whatnot. So all this annotation driven and, and works out of the box. So, all right. So let me show you some, some code. If it works, it should work. Um, so to get you started, I thought, all right, I do something super simple to show you that there is no magic, right? Uh, I'm not like having prepared anything. So you go code with Quarkus. Is this big enough? All right. So when you go to code with Quarkus, you can filter for lang chain, chain, chain. You can filter for lang chain, and then you see we have already many extensions, and the extensions are one of two things normally. It's different LLMs, and different vector stores. So I'll pick here OpenAI. OpenAI is ChatGPT. All right. And then generate an application, download it. All right. And I'll try to unzip it here. Uh, I guess it's this. This later, uh, yep, this one. All right, so I have it here, CD there. And start the ID. So by default, this is a REST application, right? Uh, there's no really magic here. If I go into my POM XML, you'll see I have REST and I have the Quarkus Langchain OpenAI extension. That's it. And when I code with Quarkus, normally what I do, I go there in and I say Quarkus dev. So I have installed the Quarkus CLI. You can do it with Maven, just pure Maven, but uh, oh yeah, I have to switch to the directory. Okay, Quarkus dev. And normally, this will fail, and I'll show you why. I press W, I'm going to the console. 
and it fails because when I have the lang chain extension, it assumes I need a key. So I'm missing this key. I'm missing the OpenAI API key. So let's try to add it. And to add it, you go to application properties, paste there, uh, OpenAI API key, API key. So this is in, in my environment. I'll, I'll try not to show it to you. <laughs> Don't make pictures, all right? So if I go back, all right, so it's running. And I have a an endpoint, hello. So, all right, it did just the stock answer. And I also have the dev UI here. In the dev UI, you see the different modules. So I have an OpenAI module, right? And just for fun, we've added this now has my key, right? So it, I can actually talk to ChatGPT if it works, the internet and everything. So let's say make a oops, make a picture of a Java developer trying to code an application. Yeah, this will take some time, obviously, but. Uh, Yeah, so <laughs> so you can do prompting in in the dev UI, and and if I go to the Langchain extension, right? I even have a chat window. I can try here chats. So this works, all right. So I can do this in dev UI, but let's try to write some some code, all right. So to to use that in Quarkus, sorry. I'll introduce a new a new interface here. Critter AI service Java. So uh, what we do with Quarkus is we follow the REST client paradigm. So all you need to do is you need an interface and you have to annotate it with register AI service. All right, and then you go and say string, let's say grid. So I want Quarkus to create the implementation of this class that will talk to JCPT and implement that and pass a prompt. So I'll pass a user message, that's my prompt. Hello from Quarkus. That's all I need, all right? And to make use of it, uh, this is the default implementation generated, so let's go there and do a inject. I wanna use my Gritter AI service so Quarkus will provide an implementation for this. And then I can just go and replace this with oop, uh, uh, Gritter, Grit. That's it. So if I go back here and say, and hit it again, yeah. doesn't like it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't save this. Yeah, I have to save. Right. So, so now ChatGPT answered. All right. Super easy. Key, interface, done. Um, let's try to make it a bit more interesting. So here I can say uh, system message. System message is where you say to ChatGPT, you know, what is your role? You behave like whatever. So let's do it like this. I'll do a multi-line comment. So you are a professional greeter. Greet people as if you are, you know, you know this guy, Hawk. 
it's a real person critters killed it's a real person that makes a show by c greeting people in fancy ways all right so i give this and now if we call again let's see if that works Don't fail me, JGPT. All right. All right, something. Oh, time out. Ha ha. Shit happens. Well, I'll try again, and I will also. All right, we have a timeout of 10 seconds, but um, let's go to our dev UI and show you something else here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, long chain. Here you can see the different parameters for ChatGPT, and somewhere there's probably a timeout. So we have a 10 second timeout, yeah. We can like increase this a bit. Any change I do here should be reflected in my application properties. All right, so bigger timeout. Did it reply this side? No. All right, so le let's uh, change the prompt a bit. Um, yeah, here. Uh, please be short, brief. Please be brief. Try once more. So this is part of working with LLMs. They're they're not predictable, right? Yeah. So this is ChatGPT being brief, all right? Hello and welcome to the exciting world of Quarkus. I'm Troy Hawk of the Greeters Guild, and I say you made a fantastic choice, all right? So that works. Um, where else we can see now? I want to show you something else. So let's say, all right, we have a discussion with the model, all right? So what if uh, we want to ask the model, like, who am I? So I, t I told him, ah, he'll, oh, let's see. I'm Quarkus, right? I'm Quarkus. So I want to see if it knows me now, who am I, right? So let's do another prompt and say, what is my name? All right. And to do that, I'll just quickly like just add something here. Path. Oop. Who am I? Just to test this, all right. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? All right. So, all right. Let's see if it's faster this time. So, hello. I'm Quarkus, etc. And I say, who am I? So it's it doesn't I just talk to it, but it doesn't know me, right? So the why it happens? Because by default on Quarkus, every request it's a new discussion, it's a new conversation. To change this, I can go back to my bin, I can go back to my service here and switch that to application scope. So what this should do would be to tell Quarkus, look, calls to this interface belong to the same conversation. So keep a memory inside. It, it by the default is in memory, like set, uh, yeah, uh, memory of 10 items. You can change it, make it bigger, smaller. So in theory, if we repeat now the uh, the exercise, we say hello. We should get back a response, and then now ask, okay, who am I? It should know I'm Quarkus. Now it didn't tell them Quarkus here, but it didn't tell me either 
It doesn't know me. If I ask again, it, does, it still doesn't know me. So uh, it, it knows me, but it doesn't tell me that it doesn't know me. So, all right, to demonstrate this a bit better, let's parameterize our templates. So in instead of just say Quarkus here, let's say we have a parameter called name. Name, which will pass it here, name. All right, so this is a template really. And then in the resource I can say grid, grid Dimitris. Well, let's try it again. Let's see. Yep, I probably haven't saved something. Yes, I didn't save this one. But you see, like I save and I go back and it just works, right? Quarkus. So greeting Dimitris. Now knows I'm Dimitris. So let's see now. Doesn't know really who am I? Still doesn't know me. I screwed up something. But when you screw up, you can unscrew by trying to figure out, okay, what happens behind the scenes? So if I go back to my uh, dev UI, somewhere there, there must be a, now it's two, yep. There's a way to log the requests and responses. So if I go there and say, I want to log this and that, Uh, if you go to application properties, we have these new two things happening, you know? So I want to log stuff. So if you go back here and, you know, repeat. Hello. And here we should have some sort of... Right, so we make a request. We're using... GPT-30 Turbo, okay. Uh, this is our system prompt. This is our uh, user prompt, all right. And then this is the response from the model from the assistant. When you see assistant, it's a GPT talking, all right. And if I continue now and say, who am I? It knows me, finally. Knows I'm Dimitri. So what happened again? We go back here. So that's the interesting bit. In the second request, we sent we sent all the previous discussion. You see here. So in the second request, we have such a this response, all right, so we can build up the conversation. And then we have the new question, okay, what is my name? And then we get back the response, oh, hello, you know, Dimitris, etc. So that's how it works behind the scenes. Now to make it a bit more interesting, let's add yet another method. Uh, where is it? Here, yes. Um, time is the message what time is it in TPT land right we want to ask the model what's the current time so I'll just do this here, here as well this is a very crude way to you know test this stuff but this oops this is just so I can show you quickly the idea. Time, time. All saved. So if I say here, what time is it? Satsipit says, I have no idea what time is it. It doesn't know like real time stuff like time. So for this sort of stuff, you have to help the model with extra information. 
And one great way to do this is, is with, with, with functions. So function, this is concept where you provide tools to the model that the model can call back. So it's like a callback. And in Quarkus, it's, it's super easy to do that. Um, I'll introduce a new class. Uh, let's say greeter tools Java. It's a new class. It's just a it's just a standard like bean. And then I'll let's say add the method string get current time. And I, I will actually cheat here a uh, local date time now to string. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it not? Oh, return, yes. Oh. <laughs> so stupid. All right. So that's a stupid method that just returns the time and ingro it ignores the format. I could use the format to format the time. So all I have to do is say, that's a tool that ChatGPT can use, all right? And to connect it with my service, I also have to go here and say in my service, uh, you can use tools, greater tools class. You can pick up any tool you see in this other class. All right, simple, all saved. I'll just stop it here to refresh because he it, it keeps now the memory and everything. So like, so this is running. And if I say time, let's see what happens now. Current time is 10.53. Cool. So I this is crazy, right? So you give it like a random thing, and out of the name of the function, we call the function get current time. It figures out, they ask me the time. Oh, I have this function. I can call it. And not, not only call it, but if, if you look at the, at, the, at the logs, so what happens in, in the request, we send the request and we send a log. Oh, we have these tools as, as well for you. So, so those are the functions. I can provide you. So I give you a get current time. You can add annotations with extra metadata, but the thing is so smart, you don't even need the annotations. It figures it out. And then in the response it says, where's the response? Yeah, in the response, is this the response? Actually, this is the response, yeah. That's the yeah, in the response, it says, can you call this method for me? All right, okay, sends you back a response. Can you call this method for me? And, and look, I use the format without any other explanation and it figures out, yeah, I think I want this format here. Hours, minutes. I ignore it in my tool, but I did it for on purpose to see it can figure out how to call the format, right? And then automatically behind the scenes, Quarkus Langchain will send back, we call the method, send back the result which is somewhere hidden, uh, that's it, here, that's the result. You see the format of the result, it's like crazy, you know, it's like it includes like, I don't know, time zone data or milliseconds or whatever, and out of this, it sends you back this nice response, the current time is this, crazy. So you can have any method you want, I have like a get customer, read data, change booking, and the bloody thing will figure it out. I think that's super impressive, right? We had like core by DL or those interface definition language, but what the interface does, it was in the comments. So it's as if so you have a programmer there that can read the comments and figure out that's how I use it. 
Uh, this is crazy. So, all right. Um, I have uh, eight minutes, so let me show you <coughs> something extra. Fine, listen. So, so far I'm talking to ChatGPT, but you can uh, uh, actually test local stuff with your computer. Now, this is an old lap a laptop, it's four years old, so, so not really great. But in this four year old laptop, I can run Olama. I'm running Olama, it's super easy to install. You can have different uh, models. And here I have really the same service like before. But here, if I go to my POM, you'll see I'm using the Olama extension, not the OpenAI. Same API, same everything. So let's see if I start Quarkus Dev. Okay, and I go back and say just hello. Now it will talk to my local Olama model. You see it's already sending stuff and shit, but this is much, much slower. You know, it's a model running on this slow laptop. I'll get a response. It'll take some time. I, I think I'll, I'll get a response. Takes it time now. Now oh, you need a faster laptop, obviously, more memory and all this stuff. Oh, see, I got a response. So Lama actually answered. Now, another thing I want to show you here in this variation of my service, I've included a fallback. This is not long chain, this is just uh, micro profile stuff. So this is the enterprise features we can add. So, so let's say here we say if the fall the call fails, fall back to this method here, fallback method. And for it to fail, I can I can do this. I can go to my application properties. Here I have a 60 second timeout. If I reduce that, let's say to just six, and I know my computer is slow. If I call again. It says, you know, it fall back to my methods. So it's super easy to add, like, you know, all those enterprise features to Yarp with annotations. I can have retries, uh, rate limiters, bulkheads, all that stuff for free. And I have five times, so maybe, all right, I'll do an even more complex example. For that, I will not code it now, but I'll take one of the Quark samples that are on GitHub chatbot. Did I stop Quarkus before? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, we will see here if this fails to start. So in this example, it's all it's, it's what we call RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is the more, more complex thing you can do with Langchain Quarkus. It will get easier uh, as we go. But the whole idea is you want to add docs you know, anything, any type of information, your discussion to enhance the the con the discussion. So let's say you have your manuals, and ChatGPT doesn't know your manual, so you it can use your manuals. But to because you have a limited window, you need to restrict how much you send. And the way you do this is you vectorize whatever you have. So you can do a proximity search. Now I sound like uh, someone that knows, but <laughs> I know very little about this stuff. This is all I understand. You do a proximity search to find the regular documents and then piggyback in the prompt to get a relevant response. So in this example, the story is that I have a CVS file with the top 100 movies from IMDb. Those are the movies here and I ingest them into a Redis store. And in Quarkus, you just say, I, I have a Redis extension. Quarkus will treat it as a dev service, and it will use Docker if it's installed to install, to, to start a Redis in the background. Now a Redis is running. It ingested the documents. 
All I had to do is configure the two extensions, uh, you know, ChatGPT and Redis. Uh, there is a bit of code to do the ingestion. That's the hard part. We will make it easier. Someone promised me today he will look into it. Um, and now I have a chatbot that knows those movies. So if I go there and say, uh, hi, can you propose a horror movie for tonight? There's stuff going in the background, you know, the we retrieve, uh, we, to we vectorize the prompt, search the Redis, find the relevant stuff, send it to Quarkus with the prompt, and we got back, oh, you can watch The Shining, right? And look here. Ah, it's a film directed by Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick is not part of my CVS information. This information ChatGPT knows. And it connected that with the files to give me a good answer, right? You cannot ask any stuff. Uh, tell me like uh, the top three movies briefly because he will start. Give me a you know whole discussion about this. Top three movies. Chipit is tired. <laughs> but there is stuff. Oh, yeah. Those are the top three movies. Briefly. That's not briefly. <laughs> so you will go then to Lizzie's talk to find out how you can constrain the model. Th the whole idea is, you know, limit the model to the type of answers you want. Like make it less creative, uh, smaller, whatever, you know. You go into chat, uh, chat prompt engineering land. So with that, I'm almost done. Uh, let's ba go back to the slides. Uh, I showed you some code. It worked most of the time. And uh, so uh, I was a very big critic of AI, you know, for 30 years, but now it works. So the future is bright. There's infinite things you can do with this stuff. Just a random list here. You know, sentiment analysis, um, get structured data of a structure, transform, summarize, expand, produce code, um, translate. Ah, we could do all this in other languages. It even understand Greek. Uh, data analysis reporting, you know, chatbots, you know, anything. So, but uh, whatever you do, you know, I, I think this is a superpower given to us, you know, the to the chosen ones. So use it for good, basically, yeah, because you can do a lot of bad things with that stuff as well. So that's all I had, and I have 30 seconds left. <laughs> Any question quickly? No? All right, so go to Lizzie's talk, B1. Thank you.